In this video in the Valentine series I'll be showing you how to make heart shaped macarons. This recipe is quite tricky and quite technical using the Italian meringue method to make the lemon meringues but if you stick around to the end of the video you'll see that all the effort and time is worth the reward. It's important when making a recipe such as this when you're looking for a deep colour that you use a food colouring gel opposed to a liquid food colouring as the amount of liquid food colouring you would need to create these would create such a wet batter that the results would not be as good. The first stage in the process is to sieve the almonds and icing sugar. As you can see here when I sieve the almonds towards the end you are left with quite a few grainy bits. It's important that we don't let these get into our batter as this will affect the smoothness of the macarons when they are baked. When you sieve in your icing sugar you will be left with a few lumps in your sieve towards the end of it. These however you'll be able to push through the sieve using a spatula. Mix the sieved almonds and icing sugar together and then add in 60 grams of egg white and then work with your spatula into a nice smooth paste. For more of the Valentine series and for lots more cooking and baking why not hit that subscribe button and turn on the notifications bell to never miss a future upload. Once you've mixed your almond paste together, set it aside and now it's time to start on the Italian meringue. The most important thing for the Italian meringue is that we do this in one smooth continuous process without stopping as if you try to stop when you're making an Italian meringue it has the potential to turn grainy and will not work. Place the sugar and water into a pan and place over a medium heat. You can shake it gently to help the sugar and water dissolve together but do not use any utensils such as a wooden spoon as this has the potential to cause the mixture to crystallise. Place the remaining 60 grams of egg whites into a bone dry mixing bowl with the whisk attachment and then when your sugar reaches 110 degrees celsius begin to whisk the egg whites on full speed. Once your sugar syrup has reached 120 degrees celsius your egg whites should be nice white and fluffy then begin to pull the syrup gently down the side of your mixing bowl until it's all fully combined into the egg mixture and then continue whisking until it cools down you can handle the side of the bowl again it's important here that you do not stop the mixing process at any stage. As you can see in the bottom right of your screen here if you do not have access to a stand mixer you can always use just a regular mixing bowl and a handheld electric whisk. If you are considering investing in a stand mixer check out the video on the channel where I unbox and review the stand mixer featured here which was a budget brand mixer. As your meringue cools down you should be left with a nice bright white fluffy and glossy meringue mixture at this stage once the bowl is cool enough to touch on the side start adding in your food colouring you can add as much or as little as you like here I'm trying to achieve a nice deep pink colour. Switch your mixer off and scrape any meringue that is remained on the whisk and give the bowl itself a good mix with the spatula and then add to your almond paste half at a time and form into a nice smooth batter. As you mix the meringue into your almond paste, the almond paste will change the colour slightly. If you're not happy with the colour like I was here, you can just add a few more drops of colouring in until you get the colour that you are happy with. Give the macaron batter one final stir, make sure you scrape all the side of the bowl and make sure that all of your almond paste has become incorporated into the meringue mix. Place your macaron batter into piping bags, you can use a cloth piping bag although as you see here I've used disposable ones, if you are using disposable ones try to make sure that you buy biodegradable ones. Turn your baking sheet upside down for the actual baking process as I find that this helps greatly with getting the macarons off during the cooling process. Here I tried to experiment and see if I could use a hack by lightly greasing a heart shape cutter to pipe out the heart shape although as you will see this didn't quite work according to plan. So now I'll show you the actual correct way to do it. For the more traditional method I downloaded some heart shaped templates off the internet, they're readily available from a google search. 
pipe the macaron batter roughly in a V shape following the heart shape and then using either a skewer or a toothpick gently tease the batter into shape before it forms a skin. This is quite a time consuming process although I would suggest do not do more than two macarons at a time as the batter does begin to skin rather quickly and if you do more than two at a time you may run the risk of the macaron batter starting to skin over before you actually have a chance to shape it. If you don't have the time or patience to pipe out your heart shaped meringues you can always just opt for the traditional round shaped ones as you can see in the bottom right of the screen here. There's also another video on the channel where I make lemon macarons using a handheld mixer. Why not go check it out and while you're there why not hit subscribe and turn on the notifications bell. Leave your macarons to stand for 30 to 45 minutes until a dry, smooth, silky skin is formed on top. At this point, place them in the oven on 150 degrees Celsius for 12 minutes. On the first batch here, you can see they're slightly overcoloured, so I've turned the oven down ever so slightly for the remaining batches. On the second batch, you can see there's a few that have cracked. Don't dispose of these, you can always use these for the bottom that people won't see. And then you can see by the third batch, I've got my oven temperature perfectly right. Allow the macarons to cool down on your baking mat. Once cool, they should freely release from the mat and then start to pair them all together until they're approximately the same size matching. As you've shaped these by hand, you will have slight variance in sizes, so match them up as best as you can. For the centre of my macarons I'm going to be using some lemon curd. There is a recipe for lemon curd on the channel, although you could fill the centre of the macarons with anything that takes your liking. You could use a chocolate creme patissier, you could use some whipped cream, you could use pretty much anything you like. Pipe your lemon curd onto your macaron shell in three dots, roughly forming the shape of the heart and then sandwich together and then choose the best side of the macaron and then leave that facing up. I also baked a tray of round shaped macarons with some of the remaining batter. It's exactly the same process for filling, although with this one you just want one large star nozzle of your filling in the centre of the macaron. Once all your macarons are filled, place them back onto your cooling rack with a tray underneath and then take some melted chocolate and then just lightly drizzle them over the top to give a nice finishing garnish to them. There's no set way to how you drizzle the chocolate over the top, you can drizzle it however you like. And there we have our heart shaped macarons. These would be perfect for a gift for a loved one at Valentine's Day, or as an accompaniment as a dessert to dinner, or you could use them to garnish the top of a cake, however you feel free to use them. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, be sure to give it a like, share, and leave a comment down below. And for lots more cooking and baking, why not check out one of the recipes on screen now?